Welcome back to Full Circle Florida. Author Mark Kennedy recently wrote all of the biggest technological inventions created by man, the airplane, the automobile, the computer, says little about his intelligence, but speaks volumes about his laziness. It would be easy to say the same thing about artificial intelligence, but you may be missing the point. Here's my conversation this week with AI expert Tim Dickey. If you're seeing a rise in AI being used at the college level, we know why students might be using artificial intelligence to make life a little bit easier, but why are teachers using AI? To answer that question, I'm going to draw on my business experience, Paul. And a lot of it goes back to labor compression. If you think about the amount of time that teachers spend grading papers, typically, if you can use an artificial intelligence tool in order to compress that, say from two hours a night to 20 minutes, 30 minutes, that's a significant time savings. Well, AI, you know, clearly can be used to make us all more efficient, but I, I guess, you know, are there concerns, particularly in college, where students are supposed to be learning <laughs> new things? Uh, is there a concern that it can be abused and it's a source of, you know, plagiarism? Yes, certainly. We're looking at it from the standpoint of them doing the work, the actual writing, and then using AI as a tool to help scaffold or improve that writing output. If artificial intelligence is used at a tool much in the same way that we use spell check or, or grammar check, and no one really calls that AI, it's been around for, for decades, uh, that's one thing. But when you, when you mention critical thinking, does artificial intelligence dull the ability of, in particular, students uh, to have critical thinking, which is something that you, you do have the space to learn uh, in higher education? I think we may be a little bit uh, on the leading edge of that. It might be too early to tell. With the trifecta of students, uh, college professors, as well as administrators, there's an opportunity to balance that out and have the right guardrails in place. Certainly if it's allowed unabated, unchallenged, uh, where, where students are more or less phoning it in, as they like to say, yes, we, we do run a, a, a significant, substantial risk of having their critical thinking skills that, that would naturally evolve through the coursework become dulled and even atrophied, I would say. And finally, I, I'll ask you to be a futurist here because AI does have this sort of negative connotation when it is talked about mainly in the news. Where do you see this going? Uh, you know, sometimes you can't fight technology. If you can't beat it, you join it and you learn how to use it. Where do you see this in 30 years? I see us in the typical rates, and I'll use the analogy of you and I are in a forest and we encounter a bear. Whoever understands how to use artificial intelligence in their day-to-day -day work, they don't need to worry about outrunning the bear. They just need to worry about outrunning you or me. Tools of the school and tricks of the trade, and we're all learning as we go along. Artificial intelligence, Tim Dickey, thank you so much for your insight. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Paul. Nice to join you. Next on Full Circle Florida, State Representative Fintress Driscoll and the report card from Tallahassee.